Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Celestial Journey. So, uh, behind me here, you'll notice that uh, I actually have this turned off at the moment. I just pulled the sand out of there. Um, but, this was actually full. It's actually, it's, it's getting lower now. Um, because this does have a small passive drain. You can see 5 RF per tick, basically to run the power monitor. Um, and I did use a little bit of these machines. Not a whole lot between episodes, but I did use these a little bit uh, between episodes. So, anyways, this has been working extremely, extremely well, though. Uh, these mana pools are filled up. This one is filled up. I did have to make uh, one small change. Pop down here. Um, I went ahead and did white insulated wire plugging up to that from Project Red Transmission uh, from the potentiometer and the reason being is because I have a mana spreader up here and I didn't want it to power that off so um, Also, I did set up one other 10 10 10 say and made another little vacuum uh, Down there and this is actually creating wood and wood essence um, I have eight stacks of each and the way I've got that set up is if we pop down here You can see there's some item conduits um, That pull out of the frame drawer that's down there uh, 32 stacks in there, of course, and it pulls out and basically it's set to round robin uh, Right here, and it just pumps up to analog crafters set to make all six different types of wood uh, From that now you can also make saplings um, All six different types of saplings from the wood essence and nature essence, which of course I'm not currently running so I went ahead and uh, Have it storing up and then the red coal is backed up. This is now up to four speed upgrades. And we are up to 127% efficiency boost at the moment. Um, actually, I wanted to grab a piece of this also. Um, because I've been meaning to slot it. Now, over here, I've been working on a lot of stuff between episodes. A whole lot. Like, I've actually been on here for about two days straight. Um, just building. I've been addicted to this pack. I blame Unhook. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, I've been working on this little entrance to the cave. Uh, I may end up putting some string just to kind of keep this cave moss from and some of the hanger plants from going all the way down. Um, but for right now, that's fine. I've kind of started shaping this up a little bit. And I added some, I added quite a few recipes between episodes like stalactites. It's nothing, you know, there's three between stone makes a stalactite. Um, also, let's see what other recipes did I Add. Oh, it's none down here. There's some stuff downstairs that we're going to check out. So if we go ahead and we jump down, uh, first up you can see that started shaping up a little bit. Oh, and I made the bloodstone bricks, so we do have those now. But behind me, dun, 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 I've been working on this. This is where I added a lot of recipes, just from Between Lands decor, basically. Um, over here, we have storage now. And I have two statues here. Uh, first up, running. This is how we're doing storage. You know, I mentioned it before, and I absolutely love it, personally. <laughs> I'm really, really loving it. Um, because it's not just a big, bulky storage drawer room. And we kind of have, like, this night market that we're building. It's coming together. And uh, these are item cages from the Between Lands. These are tricky. I don't remember if I mentioned on the Little Talks for tails before but the item cages from between lands normally they're not craftable normally they're for like one of the bosses but i made them craftable in tails i went ahead and made them craftable on here just glowstone and pitstone to make one of these um, the only thing to bear in mind is these are not breakable um, once you place them so if you add the recipe and just be very very careful when you place them and make sure that it's where you want them <laughs> just make sure um, also these right here are rotten support beams I turned them upside down uh, made these craftable added a lot of little recipes like this I only made the first one craftable so far I haven't made the others um, and then it's just rotten planks to do that um, also if you vein mine this be careful because I had a swarm of termites come after me after vein mining that it was uh, I almost I got close to dying I had like two hearts left it was scary for a second <laughs> but anyways back in here we basically have drawers and there is frame trim there there 
drawers that basically store all of our metals and gems. So basically like base metals here and I have alloys slotted over here, drawer controller. And then over here, and this is our man 258. Made a statue of him. He is running our metal shop. Kind of like, he's kind of like staring off over here, maybe watching the bridge and just kind of staring off into space. Uh, waiting for business and over here we have doctor doctor um, who is running the block shop the, like the yeah you know, like the blocks and <laughs> the block shop I haven't finished these buildings because I've got to finish the top so I've got to figure out exactly how I want to do them um, you know above the support beams there but that's okay and I've got to I've got to raise the ceiling and all that stuff but um, but yeah so this is where I'm storing blocks I did make a few I actually spent most of my emeralds at the time to make a few emerald upgrades on these. But then over here, I was low on emeralds, so I ended up just going with diamond upgrades. So, um, But yeah, so we've got those two little stalls set up and some stuff slotted. It's been making my life so much easier. So very much easier. And then over here, this is stuff that's gonna go to the library once we get on that. This is for making ground weed with bark um, to make my weed wood chip paths through here. So these are just mortar and pestles. And of course you can left click them to run them. I went ahead and set up four because it makes my life a bit easier crafting my chip paths. And then I did do a bit of sorting. Oh, and this is overflow cobblestone <laughs> because I filled this up in no time emptying out chests. I mean, we've got 256 stacks of cobblestone. I think that's plenty. So now I'm just compressing it into double compressed cobblestone, which we have over four stacks of double compressed. Um, and then I've sorted things. So we have blocks, important stuff, miscellaneous stuff, um, ores, mob items, food, plants, and then that's more plants. And then this is uh, silicon and inferium. Just because I have a drawer over there, I'm not slotting it over here. So. Um, oh, and I made pots of chance craftable also. Um, these, another really kind of... Uh, I made all these kind of just lazy recipes like, okay, I just want the stuff craftable and stuff that's, you know, semi-balanced, I think. Now, making these craftable, you could exploit these like in a normal pack so you could break them and get loot from between lands. I'm not doing that. You know, I don't care nothing about doing that. <laughs> I just want them for decor, basically. And then back in here, if we walk through this little area here. Uh, you can see I fixed up our water wheels so they look a bit nicer. Uh, we've got some redstone ore lamps there and just blocks of garnet from Bewitchment here. And this kind of goes through and into this room, which we have not started yet. The library. That's, that's only a small fraction of what the room size is going to be. And then over here I haven't done much except add the 10, 10, 10 wood seeds here. So, um, And that was basically because I knew I was going to be making a lot of drawers between episodes and I didn't want to have to um, I didn't want to have to use our good wood or anything for that so down here we have another staircase going deeper down um, which doesn't really go anywhere yet except to like a couple cave systems that plug in here and then if we go in a bit deeper this is where I've spent a lot of time a lot of time um, basically a day trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to set this room up and, and yeah, and running cobblestone, great use for my cobblestone here, um, because I have been crafting out seared bricks a plenty, a plenty and casts and this was actually our original smeltery. I set it up over here and then ran it, ran it, ran it to, to make tons of seared bricks and, uh, it's been running really, really heavily, um, since last episode. So, but it's just cobblestone, basically. My, all the change recipes for these are just meh. They're cheap. A little bit of iron here and there and uh, furnace and some other stuff. But anyway, so we've got four uh, smelteries over here. They're not going to keep the torches, but uh, I had these set up because I didn't have lava in these at a time. And they could spawn mobs in there. So, but now they can't. And I'm going to leave them there until we get the auto lava system plugged up. Um, over here, this is something we're going to be working with. I want to make a custom little tiles trapdoor to put over this. And um, there's not much use in this pack for demon metal, but I still wanted to have a dedicated place in case we ever decide we want to craft demon metal. 
About the only use would be, I guess, the gargantuan, um, which I don't know if these are actually used for anything because we'll need the demonic large plates for that. Yeah, okay. They're used for creative drones. So, okay, so there is a use, there is a uh, use for that. I was just looking in Jackie Yonder, the ingots and the blocks and stuff. But uh, back in here, we have four more smelteries set up. And this mess in the floor, we'll be messing with that today. So uh, no big deal there. And then back in here, this is for something in the future. We're not going to mess with this today. Uh, this is actually as part of the build that is going to run through here. Um, and then over here, we have, of course, we have some drawers. These are actually just made with seared bricks and uh, demonic all right. Nether steel. I was losing my mind. I couldn't think of the name of it. I was wanted to call it demonic steel for some reason. And then back in here, I think that's too many cracked bricks. I, I got a little bit... This was actually one of the last ones I did, and I think I was getting a little bit chisel happy at that point. I'll have to fix that. But <laughs> anyways, uh, this is a seared furnace controller, another seared furnace controller, and then over here we have two Tinker Tank controllers because we are doing a full-blown smeltery. Really, realistically, I think, I don't think I'm going to store things as liquids. Originally I was thinking about it, but then I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to do that. So these may not be as useful as I had originally planned, but we are still going to be using these. We're building a big smeltery, so we might as well... Um, go ahead a big forge might as well go ahead and use tinkers to its full extent uh, Back in here. You can see I've got three seared tanks on each of these um, Set up and if you're building these just make sure these have to have a foundation that runs all the way around um, Basically, you can't build it like the smeltery where you have blocks missing out the side. This has to be a perfect cube um, Top everything has to be on there and then over here, these, once again, they have to have the top, but these can not have the, um, wait, that's not a good example. There we go. These don't have to have a frame around the bottom. They don't have to be a perfect cube, but they do have to have the edge blocks. So just bear that in mind and you will be fine. So I'm not going to cover how to set these up. You can check in the Tinker's book if you're interested, but uh, yeah, I've just been building multi-blocks down here. So what we're going to be doing today, oh, and I did put a little elevator here. This is a shoot elevator. I hate these things, but I'm going to use it until we get to Thalmcraft, and then we're going to remove that and never speak of it again. I'm going to slot that there. Oh, and I got almost everything moved over. I just need to move over my portals, which I will do here soon because they're going to be set up down here um, as well. So... Um, but anyways, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working in this room. This is going to be our ore processing and alloy creation, just all things metal room. Um, and this is actually, there's a few things we have to do for this room to get it up and running fully automatic. Um, but I did go ahead and I sorted through some metals. So over here, this has real might, it has rupee, it has arlamite, netherite, cimerite, yellowite, Cinnabar. I haven't found any Octane, but Octane would also go in here and probably a few other things. These are our smelted ores. Uh, let me go ahead and just grab these, in fact. And let's pop over here. I'm just going to slot these in. So we'll have that. That. There's a little bit of extra space in this, um, but I do anticipate adding more metals to this as time goes on. Um, this is just kind of a starting point for us. And these will not, um, I know Cimerite, Yellowite, Cinnabar, all have ways that you can double and even triple these. We're not going to be doing that. Because Yellowite's not going to be very useful to us overall because we're not doing big reactors. Um, we will use it for some crafts that we need, but overall it's not going to be super useful to us. Cinnabar will be useful to us, but honestly, most of these, once I get an Orchid set up, it's not going to matter. Um, these can't be doubled or tripled, and Cimerite is really just for decorative purposes, and I'm not going to be doubling that. Now, and of course you can do more than double on all your metals. You can get like triples and stuff like that. We're not going to be doing that because we're going for efficiency on power, and because in a pack like this, materials tend to not be an issue because you pretty much have infinite materials right out the gate, more or less. Um, 
even before quarry and stuff, you have vein miner, which makes mining, you know, kind of an obsolete factor. So, um, and then over here, I've got gold, I've got lead, iron, copper, and ardite. Lots of these. <laughs> um, and we're going to go ahead and just slot these in here. So iron, copper, lead, gold, and ardite. Now these will be getting doubled through smelteries. And then over here, we have nickel, aluminum, tin, silver, platinum, and cobalt. And we'll go ahead and just slot these in. Um, and the reason I have these split up the way that I do is because this should prevent any alloys from being created in our smeltery. Because I've kept gold and silver separate. I've kept iron slash copper and nickel separate. I've kept cobalt and ardite separate. A lot of the things that would just, they would make alloys, um, they're not ran together. Two, and basically these two will be running these five, possibly six once I find another one. These two will be running these six um, through them. So this one may, I may not end up finding another metal to run through that. I don't know, but uh, this is the ones we've got right now. So if, if worse comes to worse, I'll just slot one of these up there um, just to fill in the drawers. Now just to double check that, what we're going to do is we're going to take and throw in all these different ores into here. And we're going to take and throw in all these different ores into there. Just so they can run an ingot's worth or two ingot's worth and just make sure that nothing alloys in here. I don't think that it should, but I just want to double check. Um, I think I was pretty, pretty thorough checking through everything. Okay, so now we're ready to get cracking on this. And actually, I can go ahead and remove. Okay, we'll get those out of the way for now. And then what we're going to do is um, we are going to make, let me grab all of these. And I don't have a crafting table down here one second. That's why I kind of had this in place because I could just pop out and do my crafting here. But what we're going to do, let's get ourselves kind of excited to use these. And I think they're going to look pretty cool. That's why I don't ever want to change from this system because I think it's going to look really, really cool whenever it runs. We're going to get ourselves three stacks of casting channels. That should be good or should be a good starting point for us. How's this doing? Yep, that looks good. That looks great. All right. So what we're going to do... Um, and we're going to run these these out like this. And I'm going to clean up underneath these. I think I can target. Yeah, I can target through those. So, um, But there is possibly one other set of channels that we're going to be running here probably this episode. And so I want to wait. Well, there's going to be a couple more channel systems that we're going to be running. But this is one of them. Now, of course, you could use conduits. And, of course, you don't even really have to do this. But... I want it to look cool when it runs, and I think this is going to do the job very nicely for us. So. We're going to run it over to there. And then over here. To there. This did connect, didn't it? I believe so. Yes, it did. Okay. Now, just to check this system, and also... Um, this is going to come out and run over to there. This is going to come out, run to there. Okay, so then, yeah, there we go. Our molten lead is flowing through and it's going into here. You could say we've got two ingots of molten lead. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then if I do that, it looks like silver or aluminum or something flowing through. Probably aluminum. So, yeah, it's two ingots of aluminum. You can see these tanks, the way I've got them built, they can store 840 buckets or 5,833 ingots of material. So probably more than we'll ever need. But... 
I just wanted them. I wanted them for completion's sake. You can use these to store up liquids. I've used them in the past to store uh, things like lava. They're great for storing that. Also, um, of course, you could also use a gar gargantuan drum as well. But they can store multiple different types of liquid. That's one of the beauties of them is they can store... Basically, I could store potentially 840 different liquids or technically 84,000 different liquids. I don't know. I think there's a, a limit. Uh, if I recall, it's like 30,000 or something or 3,000. I remember there was there was something I'd, I had read somewhere where there was like a technically a limit to it, but it was just so much that you'd never possibly reach that point um, in normal play. So... Um, but yeah, so that's working. And then what I would like to do now, let me pop up, let me go get, uh, let me get four pieces of cobblestone. And then I'm going to get four levers. And what I want to do, let's pop down, actually what I could do, do I have any... Sneaky lever. That is perfect. To make a sneaky block. Any kind of stone and dwindle cream, which is wither dust. I should have that, actually. Let's do... That would be perfect. So much nicer having everything sorted. So I don't have to go through, like, chests. It's taken a little bit, but we are there now. We have sorted things. So let's go ahead and get our sneaky levers. And what we're going to do... Yeah, it can't use smeltery blocks for that. Cool. So that kills that. I could do redstone conduits that go up. Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe. And then I can do a painting machine facade later. We might even get the painting machine this episode. But that way I can hide it away and it still work effectively. Because I, I could do a conduit into the casting channel, which should work fine. But that's going to look horrible. And... Yeah. Okay. So let me go get... Um, let me go get some uh, redstone conduits real quick. Okay. This is finishing up. There we go. I always enjoyed the seared furnaces. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna have, um, I guess I'm gonna run it up here, here, and then we're just gonna come down underneath the floor. So like, we'll do that, run that down, run that down. Let me go grab my Yetta wrench real quick as well. Okay, and if I go down to here, um, let's go down one more, just to be on the safe side. Um, I guess I'll take this. Okay. And then let's go ahead and yet a wrench. There. And. There. And then there. And there. And then we'll just bring these down. And what I want to do is I want to say output on the red channel. Output on red. Don't need to input signal because it's not going to be inputting any signal from that. And then output red, output red. And I'll have to do the same thing on the other side of the, the room also, but that's fine. We'll get to that momentarily. Okay. So we'll just run out to here. And then what I want to do is... Let me go get some more conduit. Oh, and if you take a look at the tank right now, you can see multiple different fluids stored up in this. So... It's doing an excellent job. Excellent job. 
And that way, if anything does ever happen to back up, I've got plenty of buffer available. So I don't have to worry about it messing up or anything like that. All right, so we're going to run this out. Um, I'm actually just going to run it over kind of to this side. One block in between them. And I could either do a redstone clock, even though that's going to toggle on and off a lot. Or, let me think. Because um, we could do a timer system. I'm ready to get the rest of the rail system put in because like right now navigating around is starting to take longer and longer. So we've got to start hitting the rails again soon. Very, very soon. Okay, so there's our hovering hourglass. So yay. Um, as far as a timer, I'm probably just going to do something fairly quick, like maybe 10 pieces of sand. Um, should be fine for our needs. And it's going to be a lot more like performance friendly than a redstone clock anyways, because redstone clock just constantly redstone on, redstone off, redstone on, redstone off. Um, it would be a bit hectic to use that in truth. Okay, so that's in place. That should be up and running. I'm going to put that there because I got to do this floor bit here. Which realistically is probably just going to be seared bricks. Um, I've still got a bit of shaping up to do on these smelteries, so. Um, okay, so now what we can do, uh, let me get, I've got two item conduits. Let me get, like, two ender pearls. And, yeah. And then let me grab a piece of our iron. And let's just pop over here. This is where we're actually going to be making smeltery or uh, alloys. So we might as well do it over here. And I'm going to get that stuff smelted up real quick. Oh, but wait. No. I don't have that plugged up just yet. And then I guess for now, since I don't have it uh, actually set up yet. And I'll go ahead and tell you what we're building right now is a little bit over-engineered, to say the least. Um, more just... For, for looks, to be honest. I want mo like liquids moving around. Um, you could realistically, you could do this all through like a couple smelteries and make it a lot easier on yourself. But like most of the things we've been building in this uh, in this series, we like to do things just because. Okay, so what I'm looking for is this right here, the smeltery controller. I want to find that and... Let me find the other one real quick. There we go. And let's go ahead and just put conduit line here. And we're going to say that you can insert. Pull that out. Okay, so there's our pulsating iron. Let's go ahead and just dump this out. Because um, I want... I just heard a chicken and a zombie. <laughs> it sounds like they were dying from sunlight or something, but I'm at Y39. So maybe they got caught on fire, maybe. Might have been a baby zombie riding a chicken, perhaps? I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and get ourselves some item conduits. There's 48 of those. And what we're going to do, let's put... Uh, so that's set to insert... Let's come over to this one. Extract the torch here just to make sure we've got light. So we don't have stuff spawning down here. Okay. And we'll just run this over. And we're going to put an extraction node here. And we're going to say it's going to be round robin so it can bounce between these two smelteries. Like if I put a sneaky lever here and let me just I don't want this to connect at all and I don't want this to connect at all and then I want to have this extract um, with signal okay so right now it shouldn't be extracting um, it's probably extracted some things for a second there yeah let me pull this out for just a minute then if I was to right click that 
doesn't really oh I don't think I sent it to insert over here though no I didn't set the insert okay so you can insert whoops that's why it's not round robining at all right now um, and then if I hit that again there we go it starts pumping iron into both of those and it's kind of focusing on iron right now it's fine eventually it's going to run through all of this um, and I will say that later on, these smelteries may get upgraded to blazing pyrothium, so they're extra fast. But starting out, they're going to be lava-based, right? So we're going to let that iron smelt up real quick, and then we're going to see if these faucets work well. And then we can hide this away just by taking a block and right-clicking it onto the sneaky lever. Um, there we go. And then this one should be just about to start melting. Oh yeah, this is working nicely. Um, I think it stopped. Yeah, the timer came around and stopped it right there. That's fine. There we go. Now this one, whenever it's running both of these, it's going to slow down. It's going to stop right here. Um, I could either run double lines or just let it do that. Or alternate it. Okay, I'll tell you what, I think we're going to go with my original plan and why there's so much gobble through here. Uh, just because it's going to be so much backup if I don't. Um, plus, I think it's going to look cooler if we do this. Let me see. If I do it, because we're going to have more fluids moving this way. And I think it'll look better. And I think it's going to run better because these are just, they're going to back up. Because even if I alternate between this one and that one, um, the problem is going to be, it's also going to be running all this through this central. Like, basically I'm going to have two smelters running at a time. And it's all just going to, it's going to be backed up so bad. Trying to run so many smelteries through <laughs> a single set. It's just not going to happen. But I think this is going to be... Pretty cool looking because we'll have like glass floors. It's also it's going to be almost like veins, um, you know, kind of running through all of this. And I think it's going to look pretty cool. So give me just a second. Let me change out these. I'm going to make four separate lines that run out instead of just having a single line. Okay, this might have it. I haven't checked to make sure that the flow is working, but we're about to check that. What's that top? platinum okay so it flows off into this like so uh, now I will say this is not efficient you could just use a conduit and like I said you could do all this through like two smelteries or no smelteries and just have power and all that stuff but that's not why we're here so uh, let's go ahead let's let that fill up a little bit on iron I want to test it and see now that, that stuff's sorted out, let's do that, that, and here in a second it should pump, and we should see what happens on this side. Ah, okay, it stops up. Okay, that all seems to be working now. So great, we've got 29 blocks of molten iron at the moment, so there's that. Um, and I've still got a ton of iron ore. Great. Okay, now over here, I'm going to go ahead and set up the item conduit system for this side. And that way we can have our items pumping out. And then this one is also active with signal. And then we'll put in our sneaky block. Don't connect. Okay, round robin enabled. Okay, there we go. It's pumping, was that 10? This side actually, pump, it, it smelts most of things really quick. It's got like 10 aluminum, all that stuff. Um, which, of course, is all stuff that smelts extremely quickly. So, okay, so that is in place. Now, I've got to get my lava automated, but then this system can run. And right now, it's only sending liquids um, over it's not actually doing anything with those liquids once it reaches the tinker tank, but we're going to take care of that also Okay 
So now what I've got to do, I'm going to have to make a lot more casting channels, I know that. Um, we'll focus on this side of the, the room first. Um, now over here, one thing I do want to do, and this is actually a really quick one, um, is we are going to... Let's set up a conduit line that runs through here. And of course, this will all have to be painting machined, but that's fine. With the sides. But this conduit line is just going to pump out like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say you extract round robin. And over here, we're also going to say active wood signal. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put a another sneaky lever in right there. Which I don't think, if I do that, I don't think it's going to impact this system. But I want to double check. I don't think redstone interacts with faucets at all. So, nope. It just goes on by. Okay, cool. That should be off. Oh, it does do this. It kind of beads up. That's fine. Still looks really cool <laughs> when it's running through. Uh, the only other option I would have is to put multiple drains with multiple outputs. But I can't have a drain on the corner. It has to be here, here, here. It's tempting to maybe run a drain up under this. Perhaps. I'll think about it. We might put a drain here and then have drain, drain, drain. And that way it never beads up like this because that will be kind of uh, unimmersive, I guess. This whole room is way more work than it has to be. <laughs> it really is, but um, maybe, maybe. Yeah, let me get three more drains. I'm going to do that. Just because I don't want it beating up like that. And this one will be somewhat kind of hidden. That goes through there. But that's fine. Okay, here in a second I should have four sets of tin come through. I'm just smelting tin through all of them. Boom, there we go. And, yeah, there's a couple little mistakes here. but I think I always set them up backwards somehow. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, so that works. Good. Good, good, good. And then I've got to set up extraction lines for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say extract is going to be a brown channel thing. You can extract always active. And then over here, the same thing. Brown channel, extract always active. Okay, and that's taken care of. Then all I have to do is plug those conduits into something where the finished products from this are going to be sent. All these ores. And then all of these ores can be smelted down. We still have to automate lava. We're going to do that. Um, that's actually what this area here is for, underneath this part. Now over here um, on this side, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of mimic the same setup, but it is going to be slightly different once we get everything plugged up. So just a heads up there. But uh, yeah, give me a second. I'm going to get this stuff all ran. Just the Basically the casting channels. I went ahead and took off the faucets. I don't know why I made those. We need something different over here. I want to go ahead and get this ran and then I'll be back here in just a little bit. And by the way, you can look here and see the arrows. They're just really hard to see. Like that's going in that direction. That's going in this direction. I went through and checked all these. They should be all flowing over to the tanks. Okay. Um, and I've got all of that stuff ran over now. Okay, so what we're going to do now, um, I need to make some fluid conduits. And I'm going to be making a few of these. It's going to require this. Um, just fuse quartz and then conduit binder. And then we're going to have to get some vibrant alloy. So I do have a few ender pearls available. And I'm probably going to use a few of them. Let me dump off what I can. So let's go with... I really need like all of these, honestly. This has been so much more work than just plugging up an alloy, like a few alloy smelters and calling it a day. <laughs> like it's been so much work. <laughs> but I do have to say like moving from like easy mode power and going with something that is a whole lot more work and has kind of 
force me to look at other alternatives than just let's plug up lots of one block machines has been extremely extremely fun because like i'm getting to make a smeltery area where normally i would never you know it would never even be a thing because it's just not needed when you have like infinite rf power then you go to like having to really work for power so you, like you end up with something like this plus i'm just having fun with casting channels and stuff um, so that I have flowing liquids running through that area. It's going to make it a whole lot more, I don't know, memorable, I guess. And more like just wow kind of factor going in there. And like, because even once we get magical crops for all of our metals, I still want orchids running, producing metals. I think so that well, so that way we can have, you know, that room not lose its activity. Because in truth, in this pack, you could easily get to where you don't even need to smelt anything just about um yeah I, I guess pretty much anything could be created without needing to be smelted in this pack so i want to avoid that but we will still provide power down there because there's certain alloys and certain things that we can't make well specifically certain alloys like fused quartz will be made somewhere else it's not part of our metal work you know i don't classify fused quartz as a metal and so I'm not going to process it as such or in the same room as our metals. So, um, but there is some stuff that we are going to be uh, processing through alloy smelters. And that's stuff like solarium. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, solarium and anything that requires silicon will need to be ran through the alloy smelter. There's some stuff the smelters can't do. But uh, also dark steel... Technically, you can make dark steel through um, alloying, but the problem is you can't get steel through alloying. We would have to actually smelt steel ingots to get steel, uh, which then would require, you know, some level of some level of alloy smelter like here. Um, so for that, we're still going to make that an alloy smelter, I think, just because I'd have to use some kind of power to produce it in the first place. So. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to attach interfluid conduits here. And we are going to have to make filters for this. So I need fluid filters. And there's not an advanced fluid filter, is there? I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't really need advanced, I don't think. So let me make up four fluid filters. Because I want to filter on um, the different alloys. Okay, so let's go ahead... There's our four basic fluid filters. And what I want to do is we're going to put these on the, um, I'll put them on the extract. We'll be fine. And we'll say extract's always active, but you're going to have to follow that whitelist. And then right here, we're going to say that you can insert. And then you can only extract. Um, so it's going to dump it into the casting channel, and that. Okay, now what I'm going to do, let's open up our whitelist, and I believe, let's see, let's do like molten, let's say like conductive iron. Let's go ahead and drop that into there. So molten conductive iron, um, if we take a look here, we can make this through alloying together iron and destabilized redstone. I think it's like one iron to one redstone makes it. So let's go grab that. It's this one right here. And basically these four different um, alloy smelters are going to handle four different alloys. Otherwise I could run conduits through here and just do like two filters, one for each side. Um, though I'm running different casting channels, so maybe not, but... Um, so anyways, there's that, there's that, and we'll go ahead and let that smelt up. And I'm going to set this to never active for right now, so we can get that smelted up and we can see it run um, in just a second. Now, while that's running, I need some sort of containers over here, and I don't know if, I'm not sure if there's something from Bibliocraft that I want to use, or... Honestly, I'll probably just use a thermal strong box, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do. 
And I've got three of those crafted up inside the old mine shaft, um, which we can move. But anyways, there's our conductive iron. So if we set this to extract is always active. There we go. It grabs that conductive iron. It pumps it out over to here. And we now have conductive iron in the tinker tank. Great. Okay, so now what I want to do, let me just grab some signs. And, oh, hey, we got an ender pearl. Hey. Um, so over here, we're going to say, like, you know, conductive iron. Goes in this one. And then over here, which I'll probably just break that off. And over here, we'll say, like, you know, pulsating iron. And other stuff will go through this, but just as an example. And then over here, we might have... Um, Like if we take a look at the smeltery controller, there's a total of 14 pages of different alloys that we can do through these. So, I mean, some of these are duplicated, like there's manual and twice. I know Constantan and Invar love to do that also. Um, so then over here we may have like, you know, maybe Invar will be one. And what I want to do is set up strong boxes so we can come in and we can dump in the materials and they can basically feed out to their respective um, smelteries. Um, you could also set it up so that it's like, you know, if I have so much of this and so much of this and so much of this, uh, I'm going to make this. The only thing is there's not really a great logistics mod in this pack beyond like 82. So, um, we're probably not going to do that. I think I am going to do that. Well, technically, I've got some holding books in here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about on these chests, though, because they probably aren't going to get that much stuff, truth be told. Um, but, yeah, so we'll have, like, a strong box here, strong box there, strong box there, and then another one above it there. And then what we'll do is we're going to run a little conduit line here. Yeah, there's the smeltery controller, and I'm just going to run out conduits. So we're going to say that you can insert always active. Here goes my last ender pearl again, because I've got to make oh, enough iron. Okay. Well, I don't have my system set up just yet. That's like I'm running out of materials here, but I do have this that we had pulverized. I can get this... Uh, this was in the pulverizer whenever I moved the machines, and I was like, okay, I'll just dump it in here. Um, thing is, once we get the rest of this set up, we're not going to be hurting at all for iron, but right now. We're also going to set these up to different colors. So the one over there is green. This one's going to be brown. And that'll be the one on this side here. So we'll do extract is brown, always active. Extract is green, always active. So then if I dump the stuff in here to make a specific alloy, um, and the reason I'm putting the signs here, I mean, it, you could do this through one smeltery right now while it's manual, but once we set up automation for like keeping all these alloys stocked, um, it'll, it's just going to help us out a lot. Um, to go ahead and have the signs and everything already planned out where stuff's going to go, right? So let me go ahead and just plug up this side real quick. And uh, yeah, and then we'll move on. Okay. So that one's plugged up now too. And then I just got to get one more strong box. And I got to make more item conduits, of course, because I'm out again. Um, so that side is all plugged up now. It's ready to go. Um, and then I can just dump my metals into the strong boxes and it can run, make the alloys, send it to the tank. And then from the tank, we have to send it to processing. So for processing, what we're going to do, um, this part's going to be very, very expensive. I'm honestly thinking I don't have to have this on this side. I think I might move it. I think I'd rather have processing over here because it would save me a lot of cost. To do that and plus it would actually kind of make sense to do it that way yeah let me grab um, grab our casting channel or casting tables 
we're going to go ahead and just set these up. Um, and the stairs would come down. Actually, it probably won't be stairs on this side. It'll probably just step down and kind of be like an overlook uh, with some railing. Yeah, we'll probably do that. Yeah, and I think I actually made too many casting tables anyways. Let me put those away. Um, because I was counting on the amount of drawers that I put in, but I forgot that these are smelted and not, you know, they're handled differently, so. Alright, so let's go ahead and just place out our ingot casts. So there we go. We have our casting bay. Um, and then what we're going to do, let's, uh, I'm going to have to go make, because I'm wanting these filtered so that no conduit can take precedent. Like if I'm, if a lot of iron's running and I'm trying to run 10, I don't want iron to fill up the casting table when I need 10. So we're going to have a dedicated casting table for each one. So what I'm going to do, and I've got to get ender pearls. Whew. Well, let me go ahead and pop down here. There is some more casting uh, basins that we're going to, have to be setting up or uh, casting channels, but I won't need those over here, so. Okay, so we're gonna say extract is gonna be always active on this, and it's just gonna pop down. This will all be painting machine, machine did it. And we'll just run this over. Go ahead and open this up. <coughs> So if I do that, out of curiosity, I want to make sure this works from the bottom. Because I've never tried this from the bottom. It's usually through the top. It does work. Beautiful. So we're going to pump our fluids up through the bottom on this. And we are going to have dedicated, dedicated spots. So like platinum will have a dedicated table. Iron is going to have a dedicated table. And so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can see right now it's pumping lots of iron in there. That's fine. We're going to deal with that. Um, but I need like two more crafts of interfluid conduits, and I need a few crafts of item conduits uh, before we can finish this out. And yeah. So I'll be back. Um, I've got to go hunt Enderman, I guess. Um. Yes, but I'm going to edit some footage anyways. I need to see where we're at on the video on time. So I'll be back here in just a minute. Okay, I got the Ender Fluid Conduit crafted up. I also got um, 21 Basic Fluid Filters crafted up, but actually I don't think I want to put those in. Um, because I got to thinking while I was out farming um, Enderman, and unfortunately it was after I'd already crafted these, but... Uh, I got to thinking that um, the my, my biggest concern is that would put most of these tables not being used a lot of times. Uh, you know, whenever we come down here, or, you know, the orchids are running and things. So certain ones are being ran, but they'd only be running on occasion, right? It would only be like, you know, here's a piece of platinum. Okay, that table's not being used anymore. I think that'd be kind of boring. Um Whereas having all the tables plugged up and everything's up and running, then there's metals coming into these tables and forming ingots, you know. Um, the goal is, like, it pretty actively running uh, long term. So I think I'm going to leave that as is. And, you know, the... I mean, if worse comes to worse, I can make dedicated tables for the alloy smelter, but I think... I think it should be fine. I do have to plug that up real quick, so let me do that. Um, extract always active and plug it in basically once we start up the system once we get the other half of this done then we can see um, how things work out um, with it all up and running so um, but I was looking and it's about wrapping up time for this episode so next episode we are going to finish out we still have a couple things we need to put into this room and I will say, as far as the build goes, it's not going to be, like, flat. It's going to be, I'm planning on actually raising this, because, like, there is uh, the floor above us. And there is a couple places, like, if we pop up, just to show you, for example, 
Oh, whoops. <laughs> I hit it. I hit the pit stone. Okay. But there is pit stone and um, you can sometimes see mud and stuff over here. That's where the water area above us is. So, I think this room clears most of it, but we're going to make kind of a more of like a, I don't know, I'm thinking kind of curved or arched roof down here. So, it feels like a building that's just like submerged under, you know, in, inside the cave, right? Um, because we're going to have some buildings within the cave that you can actually see the roofs and stuff like that. So, that's kind of the idea behind this area is that it's a building, but, you know, everything's kind of stacked and built on top of each other. Um inside of our cave area so but yeah so anyways i'm gonna end out this episode here and then i'll probably start recording the next episode uh, soon after and uh we have some fun stuff fun stuff in that episode and then we get to kick this thing on and see it oops, see it all run <laughs> so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode this has been a lot more fun than just plugging up like two magic machines that just handle everything. I will say we will have a couple alloy smelters over here to handle the alloys that are not doable through the smeltery. But, and then later on we'll get this all automated and stuff. Um, it'll be plugged up to our storage system so whenever we get in metals that come into our main input then they'll get sent here like ores, you know, and they'll get processed down and everything. So, um, but yeah, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.